Hallelujah. But you hear that? Now this morning, now last month, we say Jesus came and said what? My house shall be called what? The house of prayer. We named our house. Or we named our houses. Now today, we are going to do what? Declare what is in the house. Hallelujah. I said, wealth and riches are where? In my house. Hallelujah. Blessing is in my house. Long life is in my house. I hear what I say. Progress is in my house. He said, wealth and riches are where? In my house. Divine health is where? Peace is where? Joy is where? Lifting is where? Progress is where? Enlargement is where? Restoration is where? Raise your right hand and say, my heavenly father. My heavenly father. In this family life service, I declare that wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in my house. I believe it. I declare it. I prophesy it. In my house are wealth and riches. Wealth and riches are in my house. Peace is in my house. Blessing is in my house. Long life is in my house. In the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and prophesy somebody. Righteousness is in my house. Restoration is in my house. Salvation is in my house. Are you prophesying over your family this morning? Prophesy over your family this morning. Prophesy over your family this morning. Arabata le katumbre et la le sabre de skia. E grabata le kasubre gadeskia. Wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in my house. Divine health is in my house. Healing is in my house. Deliverance is in my house. Peace and joy is in my house. Progress is in my house. Are you prophesying this morning? Ayakata le kandalaba sunde bahaya. Rabata leka sobre e katalega la bragadosa ta. Shabata leke te 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 te. E kareba anta leka sobre gadoskia. E raba anta leka libra anda la basandi gabrigadoskia. Rabata leka sobre enta la balagadoskia. Rabata leka sobre e katalega gabrigadoskia. Wealth and riches are in my house. Joy is in my house. Lifting is in my house. Progress. Are you prophesying this morning? Are you saying something to God? Divine health is in my house. Fruitfulness is in my house. Righteousness and peace. Glory and power is in my house. Hayabala katatatata. Shebra antalika subre endelegeboshkia. Hebala katatatata. In the name of Jesus, as you have declared, so shall it be. That amen is not is not powerful enough this morning. I say, as you have declared, so shall it be. Wealth and riches will be in your house. Peace will be in your house. Fruitfulness will be in your house. Can you shout a better amen this morning? Flip over to Psalms 115 verse 14. Hallelujah. Psalms 115 verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. Hallelujah. God will increase you more and more. You and your children. You and your business. You and your job. The Lord will increase you. There's a right to say my heavenly father. I am set for increase. Increase in my family. Increase in my family. Increase of good things of life. Increase of testimonies in my family. I am set for increase. My children, my destiny, my family is increasing. We are not decreasing. We are not decreasing. That our family business is increasing. Our finance is increasing. Our joy is increasing. Our peace is increasing. Our strength is increasing. Oh, we are increasing in our family. We are increasing in our family. We are increasing in strength. We are increasing in glory. We are increasing in wealth. We are increasing in joy. We are increasing in peace. We are increasing in favor. In the name of Jesus, He said, God will increase you more and more. You and your children. God is in in every good thing around your family nothing shall decrease in your family nothing shall be lacking in your family nothing shall be lacking in your family in the name of jesus somebody shout a better amen 118 psalms 118 verse number 15 psalms 118 verse number 15 
And what did he say? The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. Hallelujah. Tabernacle is another word for all. Tabernacle is another word for what? House. He said what? Rejoicing and salvation is in what? In the tabernacle of what? The righteous. The right hand of the Lord do it valiantly. You will see the mighty hand of God in your family. I say you will see the mighty hand of God in your family. You will see the mighty hand of God in your family. He said the voice of what? Rejoicing. What kind of voice do you want to hear in your family? He said the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. You are going to declare this morning. Lord, the voice of rejoicing is in my family. The voice of peace is in my family. The voice of prosperity is speaking in my family. The voice of divine head raise your right hand and say, Heavenly Father. It is written in your word that the voice of salvation and rejoicing shall be heard in my family, in my house. I declare this morning that the voice of peace, the voice of joy, the voice of prosperity, the voice of righteousness and increase shall be heard in my family. No voice of death, no voice of destruction, no voice of divorce, no voice of abortion, no voice of, of, of miscarriage shall be heard in my house. In the name of Jesus, the voice of joy, the voice of rejoicing, the voice of celebration, the voice of salvation, the voice of peace shall be heard in my house. The voice of rejoicing shall be heard in my house. In the name of Jesus Christ. The voice of death will not be heard in my house. The voice of shame and reproach shall not be heard in my house. He said, The voice of rejoicing shall be heard in my house. In the name of Jesus. As you have declared, you will see it. Can you say a good amen? One more prayer you are going to declare. That is in Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, verse number 17. If you have it, say amen. And no weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I was meditating on this scripture during the week and he said no weapon formed anything that is to be formed goes through a process hallelujah so whatever the, whatever evil have been initiated in your family the process will not be completed i didn't hear you say amen i said any form of evil that be initiated in your family the process will be aborted he said no weapon formed when they were being this pulpit they, it didn't just manifest there was what a process hallelujah it was formed and when you were any weapon that is being formed against you right now we abort it it shall not see the light of the day and he put it into in two places he said the whip formed against you and he said the tongue that shall rise against you every tongue that is Causes against your family is cut off this morning. Every tongue that is judging your family is cut off this morning. Raise your right hand and say, My Heavenly Father. Oh, I didn't hear your voice, my Heavenly Father. I stand in the place of prayer and in the place of dominion. Every whip, every whip, no whip that is being formed against me right now shall the process. It shall not complete the journey. I am the weep of the wicked against my family no weep of the enemy formed against my family shall succeed it shall not prosper the weep of hell shall not prosper in my life every formation is deformed is rendered useless they will not complete their process they will not complete their decision they will not complete their tenor every tongue every tongue every tongue speaking evil speaking against my children against for answer prayers let your name be exalted bless every family here lift every family here reposition every family here heal every family here touch every family here lord god almighty let your name be exalted as we share your word in jesus precious name somebody shout an agreement amen help me look at your neighbor and say neighbor wealth and riches are in your house i believe wealth and riches are in your house healing is in your house fruitfulness is in your house the voice of rejoicing is in your house no weep 
formed against your family shall prosper. If you believe that, say a good amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody one more time this morning. Look at the word of God this morning. And look at the book of Psalm 66. Morning Revival. Hallelujah. What do we call it? Morning Revival. And there will be plenty money in your family. I say there will be plenty money in your family. There will be plenty money in your family. I say there will be plenty money in your family. I say there will be plenty money in your family. 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 I said there will be plenty money in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Verse 12 of Psalm 66. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Your family will enter a wealthy place. There's a wealthy place for your family. I said there's a wealthy place for your family. There is a wealthy place for your family. There is a wealthy place for your family. Your family stepped into a wealthy place. Can you say a good amen? Isaiah chapter number 54. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 45, sorry. Isaiah 45 verse number 3. What did he say this morning? One to read. And I'll give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places thou, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. Somebody say amen. amen. I will do what I will give to you. He's not going to give he will, he has given to us. It's now to learn how to possess it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We began to look at money revival, the issue of our finance. Remember, the gospel is not just, uh, the gospel is total. It's not just for prayer and fasting alone. The gospel touches every aspect of human endeavor. And it also touches our finances. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We, we, we shared something very interesting. Amen. And uh, we said that um, we looked at something very, very important. That a Bible scholar, pay attention and follow and write. That a Bible scholar did a study and discovered that out of 30 parables in the scripture, that about 20 of the parables dealt with the issue of money and money related matters. To tell you how important that is. Glory be to God. We also went ahead to look at um, the temptation of Jesus in St. Luke's chapter number 4. The Bible said that after fasting for 40 days, something happened. And what happened? The Bible said that the, the enemy came to him and told him what? If you are the son of God, do what? Turn this stone to what? To bread. And he said, it is written. The man shall not live by bread alone you must learn and get this understanding to 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 always position yourself to answer questions that will come to you life we always want to challenge the integrity of god and integrity of god's word in our lives we must we must be in the position to say this is what the word of god says hallelujah i say hallelujah we also established we also established in the word of god that um okay thank you praise god we also established in the word of god that um the last compromise pharaoh offered to the children of israel was what you can go leave your animals Leave your heads, leave your cattle that represented their money, their wealth, or their riches. Hallelujah. But Moses said, we will go with our cattle and our heads. And we established that until 
you overcome the compromise of money, you will not be released into the fullness of God's inheritance for your life. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory be to God. We looked at all of that last week. Amen. I say amen. Now we went ahead and having laid that foundation, we said that if we are going to enjoy money revival, we begin with our statutory giving, which is what? Our tithes, our offerings. The offerings, why I say offerings? Because you, you give your worship offering just as we are in service now. We are going to give at the end of the service. You give to your parents. You give to the poor. You give to your pastor. Hallelujah. You give for kingdom advancement. All these things are statutory giving. All these things are recorded in scripture. And we said that, that our prosperity is not just tied to just our statutory giving. Our giving that has to do with what our Bible says. But we must take it beyond tithe and offering. And that's why I say that our teaching this season is beyond what? Tithe and offering. Because the church have over, or, 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 or let me say not over emphasize, but emphasize again and again on the issue of tithe and offering. And it looks as if, oh, tithe and offering is just everything about kingdom finance. No. The kingdom finance goes beyond what? Tithe and offering. I see tithe and offering as what? As foundation of what? Kingdom finance, which, which is very important. You are not tithing, you are not of, of, you are not giving your offerings. I, I don't know how far you go with God or uh, with your prosperity. But we say that we have learned all of that. There's no need reinventing the wheel. If you are in this commission, you've not understood tithe, then I don't think you are part of what we are teaching. If you are in this commission, you've not understood different kinds of offering, channels of offering that you need to give, or different kinds of offerings you need to give, then I don't think you are following what we are sharing. But if you have been following what we are sharing, you now understand. You understand what? You understand the tithing covenant. You understand the offerings and all of that. Praise God. But we begin to look beyond what? Beyond the tithing and offering. And we say that if you are going to enjoy morning revival, what did we say? You must, beyond your tithing and offering, do what? Learn how to build profitable relationship. Why? Everything you need, money, material, are you understand? saying? They are no longer where? in heaven they are where on earth and is where in the hand of people so connecting with people will make you partake of it church are you getting what i'm saying we say that if you are going to enjoy money revival i must learn to do what build profitable relationship profitable what now i said something a, a wise man said not 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 me actually a wise man said to be rich in friends is to be poor in nothing am i right we established that and i added my own i said to be rich in profitable friends is to be what poor in nothing and i say why i added profitable friends is because there are friendship there are friends or friendship that is not what profitable and we picked two examples in scripture last week we said the friendship between jonadab and abnom was not a good friendship it was not a profitable friendship because what jonadab succeeded in doing in the life of abnom was to cancel abnom on how to rape the sister which he succeeded and at the end of the day abnom died premature you will not die premature i didn't hear your amen i say you will not die premature in the name of our lord jesus christ i say you will not die premature in the name of our lord jesus i say you will not die premature in the name of our lord jesus christ Hallelujah. Then we saw a profitable relationship between who? David and Jonathan. How the God, David, I mean, Jonathan was instrumental to the, to the deliverance of David from the plot of the father Saul. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, when Saul had died, David had died, no, sorry, Saul had died, Jonathan had died. What did David say when he had said Neditul? He said, Please, is there anyone left? In the house of who saw that I may show him what kindness for who for Jonathan's sake. May you build 
relationship that will outlast you. I didn't hear your email. I said, may you do relationship that will outlive you and outlast you. Jonathan have died. David, I mean, uh, Saul have died. But David has not forgotten what? The relationship, the friendship that existed between him and who? And Jonathan. May God give you your own Jonathan. I say, may God give you your own Jonathan. May God give you your own Jonathan. May God give you your own Jonathan. The one that will see danger coming and alert you. Not the one that will wait until you get into danger and start pitying you or start laughing at you. May God be profitable people around you. Somebody shout a better amen. We say that build, that said, don't, as a Christian, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is all about what? Relationship. Father and children relationship. Or you call it father and son's relationship or father and daughter's relationship. So, everything about Christianity has to do with relationship. Now, please learn to build relationship. Learn to design relationship and what? Build relationship. Because the, your money revival is tied to what? The relationship you build. This relationship could be found in the church, in your workplace, in your neighborhood. Are you going to say? In schools. In the marketplace. Are you going to say? In business world. Learn to build relationship. Don't just throw people away. Don't talk to people anyhow. Don't just feel. Now, can I tell you something? Look up here. The way things are now will not be the way things will be tomorrow. Are you going to say? There are people that you feel you don't need them today. Tomorrow you might need them. And there are some people that feel they don't need you to, today. Tomorrow they will need you. That's why we all need to be very careful. When you meet people, let there be an element of courtesy. Build good relationship. Build good relationship. It's very, very important. Why? Money is found in relationship. Glory be to God. I shared with you a testimony one time of a young man that graduated from school and no job. And every time he's passing, you know, he will always, he, see, he sees an elderly man sitting in front of his compound. He will always do what? Greet the man. And he kept on, the man observed that any time he passes, he greets him. He said, come. One day the man called him and said, come. He said, you're always passing, you're always around. Don't, are you not working? He says, I'm looking for a job. He said, okay, fine. He said, are you a graduate? He said, yes. He said, can I get your documents later today? He said, yes, I'll get them. He looked at them. He said, okay. The man just sat down, brought out a complimentary card, wrote something. He said, take it to this place. The young man took that complimentary card to an organization. No interview, no nothing. They say, resume work tomorrow morning. Are you not saying? Build good relations. They say, resume work tomorrow morning. Which means the money this man has been looking for is where? in the relationship that he needed to create i beg you even when people like i said last week you will not get a yes from everybody but maintain a good attitude there are some people that will insult you there are some people that will criticize you there are people that will mock you but maintain what the right relationship and i said when you get into a relationship make sure that that relationship does not break from your end let it break from the other end so that you know that you have done what you have done your best and this one cannot work and immediately you begin to spot relationship that will drag you down do what cut off do what cut off that some relation look at how the abnorm and jonadab relationship did what dragged abnorm down to death premature hallelujah did you get me then uh, during the midweek, we looked at what? The things we need to do to build what? Profitable relationship. Let me quickly run, run, uh, run, run through them. One, we said what? Integrity. If you are going to maintain a profitable relationship that will bring money into your hand, you must be a person of what? Integrity. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Don't engage yourself in all kinds of compromise and lies. Are you hearing saying? Be a man of integrity. What you said in the morning, when they come back in the night, let it be the same. What you said yesterday is, or yesterday, when they come back tomorrow, let it be what? The same thing. Integrity. Be truthful. The Bible says where we read in Proverbs chapter number 11 verse 3, that the integrity of the upright shall preserve them. Hallelujah. He said that when you keep it, the life of integrity over a time, what will we produce? Trust. You will not build what? Trust. 
So you have kept integrity. They monitored your word, your character, your action. It has been stable. It has been steady. It has been consistent. They say we can trust this person. Hallelujah. Have you not worked in a company where they will look at this person? They say, no, we can't put this person here. We don't trust him. But we can put this person. Some of us have worked in places where they look and they say, your boss will say, I can't give my office key to this staff, but I can give it to this staff. What is he trying to tell you? I trust this one. I don't trust this one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. We said another, at, um, another attitude we must build to maintain strong relationship is what? Loyalty. Be faithful. They commit something into your hand, be what? Faithful and be accountable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They should not give you something. They come back. You are talking story like this. You say like this. You are not steady. Be dependable. Be faithful. Be what? Faithful. They commit something into your hand. Be accountable. It is one. Bring it out is one. Hallelujah. Then I say do what? Be thankful. Always appreciate. Learn to appreciate. Learn to say thank you. No matter how small the thing is, learn to say what? Thank you. And the last one we looked at, we said, learn to say, I am sorry. Hallelujah. Always admit when you are wrong. There's some people, they can argue till they get to the grave. Hallelujah. Always, when you, when you have looked at something and actually that thing you are wrong, don't be too proud to say what? I am sorry. That word, sorry, what we cause a very big problem that was sorry can be the solution and it ends there are you with me this morning hallelujah i said hallelujah this morning let's add to what we have been learning are you with me this morning hallelujah somebody is that is alive shout a better amen hallelujah now this morning we i want we are going to be looking at another aspect of morning revival one of the aspect of money revival is understanding and utilizing your abilities i will explain but before that time if you are going to utilize understand your abilities utilize your abilities first of all don't ever subscribe to the gospel of one criticism one thing i've noticed in our time that a lot of people Today, subscribe to the gospel of criticism. They criticize everything. They criticize everybody. They listen to a message. They will not even want to pick any, anything from that message. They just criticize. It is from the pulpit to the pews. So many pastors today, immediately they pick up microphone, is to criticize other people. Listen, whether you are a constructive critic, whether you are a destructive critic, listen to me and listen to me very well. That is not a calling. Criticizing other people is not a calling. Are you going to say, don't ever subscribe your Christianity to the, Christ, the Christianity of what? Critics. They don't, the critics don't amount to anything. There's something I'm, I, I, church, look at me. There's something I'm beginning to wonder at times when I read my Bible and listen to people. I don't know when the apostolic office I've not read. I'm still learning my Bible. I don't know where apostolic office has become the office of criticism. Some people say, I am an apostle. An apostle is called to correct the church. Correction and criticism are not the same thing. And when the Paul was speaking to them in Ephesus, he said, we should speak the truth in love. Are you understand? I can be speaking the truth, but if it does not come with a tune of love, the person will not accept it, no matter how truthful that thing it is. Are you understand? No matter how truthful that thing is, if I am speaking the truth and I don't add the love factor, it will not work. Don't subscribe to the gospel of criticism. I don't believe in criticizing people. Hallelujah. Oh, but the person is doing wrong. Who has made you a judge over the person? Hallelujah. And if you feel you love the person so much and you need to correct the person, it's not criticizing the person. And we come on social media and say a lot of things today. We don't even know that this thing is, 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 is beyond what we think it is. Hallelujah. Why? If you check, there are some things many pastors say, don't do, don't do, don't do today. It's not biblical. 
But people are going to check their videos and they are bringing it when they were promoting it. Don't subscribe to the gospel of criticism. Number two, don't subscribe to the gospel of blame. To the gospel of what? Blame. You blame this person. You blame that person. You blame that person. And everything you blame. You just see yourself that you are handicapped. You blame everybody. You blame the government. You blame your wife. You blame your husband. You blame your parents. That, no. Hallelujah. Three, don't subscribe to the gospel of excuses. The gospel of what? Excuses. Oh, you just give excuse. This is the reason why this is not working. This is the reason why this is not working. Keep making efforts. Help me touch your neighbor and say, keep making efforts. I didn't hear you. Keep making effort. Why? You see, excuse. Excuse is the graveyard where great potentials are buried. You are full of potential. You are full of potentials. But because you keep on giving excuse, you bury that potential. Let me look at your neighbor and say your potential will not be buried. Your abilities will not be buried. Now why you must not subscribe to the gospel of excuses is that what? That, um, I said that is a graveyard where great potential, great potentials are buried. Number two, excuses is the manure that helps hardship to grow. Anytime you begin to give in to excuses, you increase hardship around you. So don't subscribe to the gospel number one of what? Criticism number two. Blame. Number three, what? Excuses. Somebody say amen. Matthew's gospel chapter number twenty. Is that where we are starting with? Okay, let's start with that. Matthew's Gospel chapter number 24. Let's get there. Are you there? Everybody run there. Hallelujah. Is that where we are starting today? Hallelujah. I'm trying to get where we can pick it up and get what we are saying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, let's let's begin. Okay. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to see a good place to we'll start to share this morning. All right, let's go to chapter 25. I think that's let's let's begin from there. Look at verse 14 and 15. Are, are we there? Shall we read together? Let me let me get there so that we can read it together. Chapter what? 25, yes. Verse 14 and 15. Shall we read together now? For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country would call his own servant and did what? Delivered unto them his goods. And one he gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straight way he took his journey hallelujah i said hallelujah okay before before i get to this place jesus got into town amen and the tax collectors please look up here the tax collectors gathered and said have you paid your tithe he said you know tax he said, no. Are you going to say? He said, you must pay. You have to pay your tax. You are a citizen. And he called who? Peter. Amen. He did what? He called Peter. That is where I wanted to start from. Let's look at chapter number 17. Go to 17. I'll come back to that 25. Let's get something this morning. Are you there? 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money 
came to Peter and said, Does not the master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of this earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or the strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then we are, then are the children free. Everybody read verse 27. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that first come up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and to thee. Somebody say amen. amen. That is where I wanted to start from. Then we, we go to verse chapter 25. Look up here, everybody. Now, I discovered uh, that if you follow the gospel very well, one of the things you notice is that miracle money have been, this scripture have been used very well in so many quarters for miracle money. But I want us to look at this scripture beyond just miracle money. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, look up here. Everybody look up here. Look, look at me here. When they wanted to pay this tax, Jesus called who? Peter and said, go to the word, the sea. You will find the fish there. Cast the hook. When you get the fish, open the mouth and do what? And bring out money. That money was not fake money, brothers and sisters. But that is not the area I am going to. Why Peter? Why not Matthew? Probably if Jesus was to send Matthew, where will he send Matthew? Matthew was a tax collector. Maybe go to the bank. But he called Peter. Are you following me? He called Peter and said the word, go to the sea. Why? His ability, he had the ability to fish. Probably if he said Matthew, when Matthew gets in there, he doesn't know how to put a bait in a hook. He doesn't know where to throw what the, the, the net or the hook to get the fish. But somebody had the ability in him. And because he knew that Peter had the ability, he said, do what? Go and cast your hook in the sea. You will catch a fish. Open the mouth of the fish. You get what? Money. Brothers and sisters, it tells us from what we are sharing. Money is hiding in your ability. Money is hiding where? The question all of us must answer this morning is that, have you located your ability? Do you know where your ability is? Do you know the kind of abilities you have? Because if you don't know the kind of abilities you have, you will not enjoy money. That's why I said our teaching concerning finance this time around is beyond tight and is beyond offering. We have looked at what relationship, how to build relationship. Two, I must know that money, money reviver, if I'm going to enjoy money reviver, the first thing I need to do is to revive my abilities, to know my abilities and learn how to put my abilities to work. Somebody say amen. I said, somebody say amen. He said that you have to send Peter. If you put it in our today's word, you can say his profession. Peter is now a pastor. I hear that saying, but he had what abilities in the area of fishing. And he had to send the one that had ability in the area of fishing to be able to do what? To get that money. Which means when I when I concentrate in the, my area of ability, money will come out. And I see God putting money in your hand. I see, I see your ability bringing plenty money into your hands. Am I talking to people in the church this morning? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Do you hear that? He had to send Peter in the area of his ability. And when he came, he came back with money. You will come back with money. Huh? Now the question you need to ask your neighbor this morning, do you know the abilities you have? Hallelujah. Now that moves us to the second scripture we read in Matthew's Gospel chapter 25. What did he say? He said he called his servant and did what? And gave them what? Talents. Remember we mentioned it last week. How many were the servants? Three. 
The first one he gave what? Five talents. The second one he gave what? Two talents. The third one he gave what? One talent. And we said that if you look at that word talent, that also the, the, some translation of the Bible equated that talent as what? Money. That five talent equal to what? Five thousand dollars. Two, ta two talent equals to what? Two thousand dollars. And one talent equals to what? One thousand dollars. Praise the Lord. And when he gave it to them, I want you to look at one, one particular statement there. Go to that Matthew's gospel. Are you following me this morning? Hallelujah. Look at verse number. Look at that verse. Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents. To another two. And to another one. To every man according to their. That is where I want you to do. Several ability. To every man. He gave the word according to what? Several ability. Ability. Please notice something here that the Bible did not say that this master gave them this talent according to their family background. Uh -uh. Because at times we tie certain things to say it's my family and, 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 uh, and it's my family, it's the family I came from. No, he did not look at their family background to do what? To give them what? The, the talent. Two, he did not look at what? The environment to give them this talent. Three, he did not look at, he did not measure on likeness or luck to give to them. He gave them based on what? Ability. I should tell you that every one of us here, God knows the abilities we have. And everything we carry in life is according to what? Our abilities. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Because at times you discover that many of us will tie so many things to things that are not supposed to be. Oh, my family is my family. If my family was, if I, I came from so 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 family, I know that things will be. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Please look up here. Have you observed that some families are very wealthy? The man has built a lot of wealth. But along the line, the children. The children don't have the ability to manage the world. And when the man dies, what happens? Vandalism and riotous living comes in. Because one of the things we need to learn is the ability to make, to manage, and to multiply money. Are you not saying? You must learn, learn what, develop what? The ability to make, to manage, and to what? To multiply the money. If this ability is not there, no matter what they put in your hand, give it time, it will come back to zero. No matter what they put in your hand. Money will enter your family. I say money will enter your family. I say money will enter your family. He gave to them, he, the, the master came, he gave to them what? Talent according to their abilities. Not according to their family background. So let nobody deceive you. Hey, what you are passing through is because of the family you came from. And all this, all this thing, you patronize all this thing that is going on on, 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 on the streets. I don't, I don't know. Everything that happened to you, they say it's from your family. Hey, there's something, there's a message I've shared with you. My identity, my victory. You need to go and listen to that message. The day you got born again, God does not read you from your biological family. He reads you from what? From his own kingdom family. Your lineage changes. And until you carry that mentality, everything is, is coming from your family, coming from my family. Do you know the family I came from? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It's coming from your family. This man called the three servants. Say, all of you, come. He didn't consider their family background. He didn't consider their face or luck. He didn't consider the environment. He just kept to them say, I've looked at the ability you carry. Take $5,000. Take two thousand dollars. Take one thousand dollars. Go and do business and return the profits to me. And one, check out of three of them, only one. Now somebody will ask me, Pastor, why did he not give all of them five five? He knows the ability. If he you see that man, he gave two two talent. If he gave that man five talent, the man will not be able to produce. God knows my ability. He knows your ability. You know we can pretend before men. We cannot. We cannot pretend before God. Church, am I talking to you this morning? Yeah. I can pretend before you say I can do this thing. I can, but before God, God knows what you can do and what you cannot do. 
Am I communicating this morning? Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you why, how God dealt with them. When they finished trading, and the master called them, said, Oh, yeah, come and give me a report. This one said, Master, you gave me five talents. I, I made another additional one, five talents. He said, Good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. When the one that came with two said, You gave me two, I have made additional one, two. What did the master say? He made exactly the same statement he made to the one that brought what? Five. Why? He is judging them according to their abilities. Now, the challenge many people are having today is that we leave our abilities and we concentrate on somebody that is building his ability. And at the end of the day, you see envy. You see jealousy. You see criticism. The person has taken time to build his ability. You have left your own ability. You have left your own ability. You are not doing anything about it. Somebody has built his own and now you are envying the person. Touch your neighbor and say, please don't envy me. No, touch somebody and say, don't envy me. Build your own ability. There is an ability on your inside. There is something you carry into this world. And you are not telling somebody there is something you are carrying. There is something you brought into this world. Build on that thing. Work on that thing. Can somebody say, amen. Money is in that ability. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, let, let, me, let, let me quickly read to you. I want you to write it down. I say that the abilities you possess defines the amount of money you locate. The abilities you possess define what? The money you possess. Number two, if you seek to acquire, develop several abilities so that you can command several streams of income. Your ability. You know, some people, some people just look at other people and they feel they are lucky. Oh, this person is so lucky. This girl or this boy, this man, this family are so lucky. There is no luck. There is no luck in the kingdom of God. I want you to know that. There is no what? Luck in the kingdom of God. Everybody up there walked his way up. There is nobody that jumped up overnight. Everybody walked his way up. And one of the ways you, 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 you go up is identifying what God has placed in you. There is something God has placed in you. You are not an empty human being. There are abilities in you. Until you know them, you cannot trade with them. And if you cannot trade with them, you cannot get what they carry. They can't deliver to you what they carry. Hallelujah. Church, I don't know whether you are getting me this morning. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That's why if you read the book of Genesis chapter 2, when you get back home, try to read it. When God planted the garden, he put in that garden what? He put in that garden the ability to do what? The ability to walk in four dimensions. He said he planted the garden, then he put a river. That river flowed towards four dimensions. Today they call it four streams of income. That is to tell you that every human being, there is something, the, the, least, the least ability you carry is up to four. The least is what? Four. The least of the ability you carry is up to four. And the Bible said, that ability will go this way, we go that way, we go that way, and all of them were all producing. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Then let's look at this critically this morning. Abilities of a man can be divided into two. Into what? Into two categories. One, we call one inherent or natural abilities. Two, is acquired abilities. Are you following me this morning? One is what? Inherent or natural abilities. The second one is what? Acquired abilities. Please pay attention. The natural abilities we call we call what talent or gifting, or we call it my hobbies. This thing, this thing is just my hobby. Have you had so, have, have you had that word? Yes. You see, people use it. Where cooking, quick cooking is just my hobby. Are you gonna say? They tell you this so 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 thing is just my hobby. Which what the person is trying to tell you is that. This thing is just natural. I met a young man the other day. 
And I was just a barber. I wanted to cut my hair. I think one of us. One of us. Yeah. And I asked him, where did you learn how to cut hair? He said, I didn't learn it. I just, I just, I just discovered that I could cut hair. And I said, you could cut hair very well like this. And people are coming. He said, I've never sat under anybody to learn, cut it this way, take it this way, put the clipper this way. He said, I just discovered that I could cut hair. And I started. Are you going to say? Now, there's what we call natural abilities. Please, everybody pay attention. When God created you and created me, there are abilities, there are talents, there are natural gifts he placed in you and he placed in me. When we came down from our mother's womb into this world, it is inside. All those things were inside. Are you what I'm saying? Now, what, how do you know those things, can I tell you, look up here. Those things you do at times with joy and nobody taught you. You just discover that you find pleasure in doing them and you do them well. They are natural abilities. And money is hiding in those abilities. If you don't recognize, do you know that times, most of the time when we carry our natural ability, you can just do something and somebody wants to pay you. You say, ah, I don't, I don't worry now. I just did it. I don't like doing it. Money is hiding in the ability you carry. But you must do what? Discover the ability you carry. He gave them talent according to their abilities. And we said that abilities are divided into what? Two. The natural ability. Look at your life. All of us are going to take home assignments. What is our take home assignment? When you go back home today, you finish eating and resting. Before night or before you sleep, Bring out a sheet of paper. Look at yourself. Write your name on the sheet of paper. And write maybe one. We said that in the garden, how many streams? How many streams were flowing? Four. Okay, write at least one, two, three, four. And just sit down with yourself. And write your name on top. Like somebody that's answering exam, um, exam that, that was said. And ask yourself, what are the abilities I have? Can you locate them right up to four? Are you getting my assignment this morning? Write at least... You could do up to 10. Write what? 4. Then when you write up to 4, then ask yourself a question. Which one am I using right now? And which one am I not using? And what do I do to put it to work? Why? The prosperity and the abundance you are looking for is, in, is hiding in your ability. What I'm saying? Please, are you getting what I'm saying? So that we will not just think, hey, you know, so people today, they go to church every Sunday. They are hearing about tight. They are hearing about offering. They are hearing about tight. Some people are getting tired of hearing about tight and offering. As if every prosperity that the, the, the believer needs is just in tight and offering. Brothers and sisters, tight and offering is just the foundation of your prosperity. You need to build on it. And we said that the first one needs to be the word profitable relationship. Don't treat people anyhow. Don't talk to people anyhow. Whether on phone or physically. Two, you must begin to locate the abilities. There is something you came into this world with. There is no empty human beings. That's what, listen. That's why people that don't go to church and they don't believe in our God, they will discover these abilities. Both this one I'm talking about and the second one I'm about to talk about and they they, they work on it very well and they produce a lot of money. They tell you there's no God. After all, the, 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 the God you will are calling want to give you money. I'm not serving it, but I have money. But listen to me. The Bible says that it's only a fool that wakes up and says there's no God because someday you will know whether there's God or not. If you don't know whether God exists here, at the world after now, you will know that God exists. Hallelujah. You know, there's some people that come out and say, what they are making noise, Christians are making noise, there's God, there's no God anywhere. After all, I am rich, I am stickily rich, I'm richer than many Christians. Yes, you may be rich in this world. You may be what? Rich in this world, but after this world, we'll see where your riches will take you to. It is only a fool that wakes up and says there is no God. But what am I trying to say, brothers and sisters? I am not, touch your neighbor and say, you are not empty. You are not talking, tell somebody you are not empty. There is an ability in you. So let's take home assignment. One, write your name. One, two, three, four. Four. Just four. What are those things I can do without going to school? What are those things I don't need to go and learn? Nobody needs to train me. 
I can do it very well. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There are people, just like this parable we read, there are people you give them 50,000 naira. In the next six months, that 50,000 naira has multiplied. There are people you give the same 50,000 naira by Wednesday, they are in the market. For which Wednesday? By first thing tomorrow, tomorrow morning, they are in the market buying what they will wear, buying what they will eat. Why? They, another person is thinking, how do I multiply this money? The other one is thinking about, how do I eat this money? Their abilities are not the same. Uh, church, are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I communicating? Yes! That some people today, you give, you give them that $1,000 that we talked about, which we said last week in our currency is about what? Over 700000 In the next, in the, before December, they multiply it to 2 point something million. But the same people you give that money, oh Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they buy this one, they buy this one, they say they are raining and all of that. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you discover that nothing is remaining. Church say amen. What is the number, the, the number two um, category of ability? We said the first one is what? Your endowment, your natural ability. Those things you do without blinking, you are not worried. You just wake up, you do them. Anytime they wake you up, anytime they wake you up, you, are, you do it with joy. Whether there's profit or there's no profit, you just do it. Now the second one is the acquired abilities. What do I call it? This is the one you do what? You go for training. You do what? You go for training. Hallelujah. You locate where they are doing that thing. You know that you have passion for that thing. You know that you can do that thing very well. But you don't, you, you, with, with what, 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 what you have right now, you can't you can measure up in the market. You now do what? Locate where you'll be trained. And you go there and they begin to train you. You acquire that one. The other one that is a natural endowment you don't acquire, you don't need training. It is there. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying? You go for the training. Money is in that thing. Money is in your ability. You just, you begin to acquire the training. You begin to, you, you open yourself to be trained. Hallelujah. And it, this aspect is the aspect every one of us need. I, I want to say something today, and I think it's very, very important. We are past in the era where you come out of school and say, oh, I am a first class graduate. It is not enough. I am two one. It is not enough. I am very intelligent. It's not enough. You must begin to add something to yourself every day. Why? Ask me why. I didn't hear your I said, ask me why. The environment we are operating is changing every day. If you don't add something to yourself, what you know yesterday might not fit into today. And what you know today might not fit into tomorrow. Are you going to say? Even when you have acquired training, life is a continuous learning experience. You must keep on adding something to yourself. It will shock you. <laughs> I remember the other day, sir. We needed to do something and I called um, uh, was it Pastor Joe I called and we needed to do something and then um, no. I went to the bank and I tore a check and I wrote everything and dropped the check. They looked at the check. They said, no. Okay. It looks as if it's been long you came to the bank. I said, yes. They said, we're no longer using this check. You have to apply. I said, what is happening here? Check that you people deb debited me some amount of money. All of a sudden, they said, we are upgrading every day. You see, until you update your life, you remain outdated. So the second way, we second category of abilities, what the outside the natural one which God has given to you and He has given to everybody, you must be trained. There must be what training. You must acquire something. Brothers and sisters, you are a youth hearing me, you are a man, you are a woman hearing me. Don't leave yourself idle these days. Go and get something, go and get some training, my brother. And because money is in it. You say you are a graduate. Yes. After graduating, go and get more certificates. Go and get more training. Have you observed today? Go and check the net. They say they want to employ. They will not tell you like 10 years experience. They say added professional certificate. Uh, I mean, uh, added uh, professional certificate will give you the advantage. Are you going to say? 
So which means you are, you are a graduate, you are a graduate, you are intelligent. Yet, somebody may not have two one, but he has added some attachment courses to his own. He has advantage more than you that came out first class. So, let's begin to, money is hiding in my, the relationship I build, and money is hiding where? Money is hiding in my abilities. What can I do? What do I have? What do I need to acquire? I began to tax myself recently. Praise God. My wife asked me a question one day. He said, every day you write, in the night you are writing, in the day you are writing, all these books you are writing, if you die per adventure, who will publish them? I say you will publish, you and my children will publish them. <laughs> we love to write. But that was a good message. But what, what did I decide to do? I decided to tax myself recently. I discovered I could write. That is, that is what? That is an ability. Not only preach. Not only prayer. I could write. And I've written some books. So I sat down. What am I going to do? And I begin to put myself in place. And I have to begin to make inquiry and get information. I said, okay, first of all, I am going to edit those books. Type them, edit them. Publish them as e-books. Let them be online. But you will not read it free online. Are you going to say? Then when I take that step, I'm already making an inquiry. How do we get it to Amazon? So that we can publish it on Amazon. Then when I do that, I come back to the local publishing where we can publish it locally in our environment. Anything you don't take step will not open the door, door will not open. If you just keep sitting down, say one day what will be will be, it will never be. And time waits for nobody. Anything you need to do, start doing it now. That thing you say, see, which month are we now? July. In the next, in the next how many months? Five months. The year 2023 will be over and it will be over. How, what have you done concerning your dream? That business you say you want to start, what have you done? Listen to me. Life is what? A warfare. You need to confront it. If you sit there and say, okay, uh, God is on the throne. He will remain on the throne, no, but things will not be happening around you. It's a fight. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a fight. Ability. Your money is in your ability. And can I say something? When God gives you a natural talent, it comes raw. Now, you must work on that talent to be able to fit into today's world. What am I saying? Maybe you, you, can, you don't need voice training. Think. But that voice needs to be refined to fit into what you want to do now. Church, am I communicating this morning? I want to release you this morning. What money reviver? How to make out how, how can generate money and multiply money? So if we just sit down and say, I pay my tithe, I give my offering, it is it is good and it's important. We encourage everybody. I'm a tighter, I'm a tighter in this ministry. Are you going to say? But it's not enough. Every one of us, let's begin to tax ourselves. I am not an empty human being. I am, I'm, I'm not waiting for luck. There is something I came into this world with. It's called abilities. I must locate them. And I must find out where I can deploy them. Hallelujah. To bring money. Two, maybe, maybe I need to do what? Go for training. Glory be to God. Go for what? Go for training. A young man this that challenged me the other day. He graduated and finished use. Was it use when he finished use? No, he has not gone to use service. Carried his bag one day and walked around the city and he saw a company. He walked up to the company. He said, I studied so 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 because I can help people do this. They say, No, we are not looking for staff. He said, I'm not looking for payment. Just employ me so that I can help you people to be doing and be learning. When they saw what the young man can deliver, they placed him on salary. When he went for youth service, they say, please, immediately after youth service, there's a job waiting for you. Life, life will not deliver to you when you sit down and be watching. You don't watch life, you walk life. What do I say? You don't watch life, you walk life. The way things are happening, it is dangerous to sit down and be looking for who we give to you. Because the person who thinks that he will give to you is also having his own challenge. So, listen, do something. As you do something, grace will back you up and things will open for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
you have ability. Touch your neighbor say you have ability. Your money is hiding in your ability. Your money is hiding in your ability. Your money is hiding in your ability. I want to preach in worry before we begin to conclude this morning. And then uh, they brought me, they gave me, they checked me to a hotel. <laughs> and early in the morning, the young janitor, the young guy cleaning the toilet and the rooms, he, the, this young guy was singing. I was doing morning devotion. Goodness me. This guy's voice is powerful. I have to, when I finish, I call the young guy. I said, how are you? He said, I'm fine. I said, were you the one singing this morning? He said, yes. I said, ah. I said do you be, belong to any musical band? He said, no. I said, do you know that this voice can sell anywhere in the world? He said, there's nobody to help me. He said, there's somebody to help you. Get serious in your church. First of all, begin to use that voice. To, I said, do you belong to a church? Say, I said, do you sing in the choir? I said, no. I said, that's where it starts from. That's where what? It starts from. Brothers and sisters, the, your, your prosperity and my prosperity, the money we are all asking for is in what? It's buried in our ability. Your money revival is in your ability. So, go home and sit down. What abilities do I have? Write them down. Which one am I using? Which one have I neglected? And what do I do about it? Glory be to God. Have I spoken to you this morning? Because we're going to pray in a short while. We have taken two now. Outside tithe and offering. What was the first one? Profitable relationship. Profitable what? Build good relationship. When I say relationship, I'm not talking about sexual relationship. I'm talking about relationship that will help you fulfill your destiny. Hallelujah. Build good relationship. Somebody that wants you to move from where you are to the next level. Then, check in your abilities. You heard the, that news before we rise up to pray. That was both on print media, social media. That young lady, listen. That young lady selling bread in Lagos. And they were doing film shooting and snapping. And she was carrying her bread, passing. And they mistakenly, while they were trying to take the snapshot, she passed. And they caught, the, the camera caught her picture. And they took the picture to the studio. Only to look at this girl, they said, This girl is a model. Are, are you going to say, this girl has what it takes to be a model of any class. Yet, she was doing what? Carrying bread. She did not know the ability in her. And what relationship we do most of the time is that relationship with the world bring out the ability in you depending on who you are relating with. They have to go in search of the bread girl. And by the time they changed, they removed bread and put makeup, she became a mother. And money began to come. Your money is in your ability. Your money is what? In your ability. Your money is in your relationship. So, I commend you to God. I pray God that what we are sharing this season, if you can just begin to put them to work, you say that something begins to happen around you. And you will never lack. You will never beg. You will never borrow. You will never be poor. You will never be defeated. You will mock money. Money will not mock you. I didn't say here yeah, amen to this money. I say you will mock money. Money will not mock you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, stand to your feet this morning. I think I've said something. How many of us are taking that assignment home? Get back home. Write your name. Write one, two, three, four. At least four. What are the abilities I possess? Which one have I neglected? Which one am I using? Hallelujah. The one I've neglected, what do I do so that it can begin to give me money? Lift up the sense. Let's bless the name of the Lord this morning. Just worship the name of the Lord this morning, everybody. Just worship God this morning.
We're going to pray. I'm going to pray for every family in a short while. But just lift up those hands. Your family with no peace and joy. Just with those hands. There is an ability in me. Lord God, my prosperity is in my ability. Help me to locate the ability in me. There is a nature in me. Oh God, I am not an empty human being. And you talk to God wherever you are. Lord, I 